Well, today the T750 is gonna get new sprockets, but this is also a great time to go ahead and service the drive motors because I just bought this machine and I don't know when the last time these drive motors were actually serviced. And it's really recommended to service these drive motors every 500 hours. Now, sometimes these sprockets get stuck onto the hub. So I'm gonna go show, I'm gonna show you how to remove that sprocket without taking the track off. I'm just gonna lift the track up. We're gonna press that sprocket off and then we're gonna talk about how to service this drive motor properly. So I am gonna use a crane. I'm cheating a little bit, I know, but you could use a strap over your lift arm and actually use your lift arms to pull up on the track. Cause what I'm gonna to have to do is collapse that front tensioner by releasing the grease in the tensioner. And I just use my crane to lift it up. If you have another machine, another skid steer, a small excavator, um, you know, a big tree branch or something, you can easily pull this track up. I'm just happening to use my crane. But before I lift up, I've got to release the grease in the tensioner by removing this plate in the rear. And then using a 3 8 socket, I'm going to loosen up the uh, tensioner valve itself. And I'm going to put a rag under here to catch all the grease as it comes squirting out. Release the schmoo. So it's important to clean your threads and I've already cleaned my threads on my studs on the drive motor itself so I can back these nuts off. I want to clean them and I've actually lubricated these. So this has been sitting like over a day with lubrication on it and it's right in this area here where the actual sprocket seizes on the end of the motor and it's very hard to get off. But we've got four holes here that we're going to use to put bolts in and press this uh, sprocket off. But let me go ahead and get these... Uh, mounting nuts off. So to push this sprocket off, we're using a half inch bolt. This is a half by 13 bolt. And the, the usually you're gonna find dirt and rust inside the threads here. So what I'd use, I uh, always tap these holes before I put a bolt in there. Because too many times when I've done it without tapping, it goes in there, you're going to cross thread it and it's going to gall up the threads and you're going to ruin your sprocket, if, especially if you're putting your sprocket back on. You don't want to ruin these threads. So I always run a tap, a bottoming tap, through all these holes with a little bit of lubricant. So luckily this sprocket is gonna come right off. I probably could have pried this one off, 
but I'm trying to show you how you would do it if it was seized on, because a lot of times these are seized on. As I was running the tap through, I actually saw the sprocket move, so I know it's gonna come right off. But again, using my three quarter socket on these half inch drive bolts, I've seen a lot of people ask questions what size these threads are. So yeah, half 13. So now I got the sprocket off on top of the drive motor once we get all this dirt off. Right back here, we're gonna find some plugs. Now that one's buried under dirt, I gotta dig that one out. There's one on top and one on bottom. There's also a plug in the end of the drive motor here. I never use that. I think there's some drive motors that you have to use that plug but it's so hard for the oil to drain out of this and it's so hard to feel. I never use that. I always go to the inside of the sprocket and use these here. Let's go take a look at a drive motor I've already got pulled out and get a better look at that. So this is an identical drive motor. You can see the plug here on top. This is actually the bottom of the motor. So this is where we're gonna drain it. And 180 degrees opposite of that is gonna be our fuel hole. So we're gonna pull this one off uh, first, then we'll pull the drain out and let it drain. Now this is the MCR-F series motor. This is the old style motors as opposed to this would be the MCR-T style motor. This uses a different oil and it's a different process to, um, to service these motors as it is to the old style F motors. They use a different oil. That's very important to know which oil goes in which motor. So now that I got all the dirt and debris cleaned out of it around the hole, I use the brake cleaner to also clean in there so that um, when I take the plug out, no, no dirt drops down into the motor itself. So these plugs are 916, so I'm just using my 916 socket, man. Luckily that one just pulled right out. So to me, the oil looks really clean coming out of this. It doesn't always look like that. Usually it's really black, thick gear oil, which tells me that the previous owner actually took care of this and actually serviced this motor because the plugs came out real easy. The oil looks real good. It looks thin to me though. So I don't know if they used the correct oil, but I don't know. That's kind of why I'm doing it because I don't know what's in there. Now I'll know for sure exactly what I'm putting back in.
So to refill this motor, I am using Bobcat's synthetic gear oil that they recommend using for these motors. I hear a lot of people ask, well, what is this oil? What can I use? What can I replace it with? Because this bottle is very expensive. It's $17 for eight ounces, right? That, that's really expensive. Dry motor is $5,000. You know? So it's your choice, you know, put whatever gear oil you want to in there. But I'm definitely sticking with the Bobcat Synthetic Gear Lube because this is actually uh, recommended by Bobcat and Rex Roth themselves. Rex Roth actually sets the uh, premise on what oil they want to use and that's what Bobcat sells for it. So yeah, $17, $5,000 your choice. Now this motor holds six ounces. And the thing about this bottle is there's no, no marks on the bottle to tell you how many ounces it is. But you can tell that, you know, eight ounces is right here. So just divide it two, four, six, eight ounces. So I always just take it down to about right here. And that's, some people put the whole bottle in there, but I don't want to overfill it either. So again, this, this motor holds six ounces and, and like I said, I just kind of guess and I know that close to the bottom of the label here is two ounces. So I know I've got six ounces in this motor, but definitely check your service manual because not all motors are six ounces. Um, some of the T180s and T190s are only two ounces of that same oil. Um, like I said, the newer style drive motors, the MCR-T style, um, you know, the, the six, the five and 600, series motors are 12 ounces and the 7 and 800 uh, motors are 17 ounces i believe so just but on your serial number and your model just make sure you check your service manual to get the correct amount of oil in your drive motor Now I'm going to try to get my new sprocket back in here. Another thing, I don't know, just a quick little tip is that um, when you're looking at these old style motors, you can see this one has eight studs on it. Eight stud motors are two speed. If you only had six studs, it'd be a single speed. So a lot of people ask, how do I know if my machine has two speed on it? Well, if you have this style drive motor, you can tell if it only has six lugs, you're a single speed. Uh, eight lugs, you're a two speed. Not to mention, on the side of the machine, it should also say two-speed. And then I'll come back and torque goes to spec. Yeah, I might not, but I might. As far as you know, I came back and torqued these to spec. All right, now that I got my sprocket on and uh, my crane out of the way, using my grease gun, we're gonna pump this back and then we're gonna tighten this track back up.
So that's really how easy it is to do the oil in your drive motors. And right now I cannot stress enough how important it is to do that. If you can't remember last time you changed the oil in your drive motors, just take some time and do it because Again, as a $5,000 drive, $5, drive motor, and they're getting harder and harder to find. We're living in weird times, man. This is what, June of 2022, and it's just, everything is hard to get, all kinds of parts. And drive motors, people are waiting a long time for drive motors. Even remands are not available, much less a new motor. So take care of the motors you got so you don't have any downtime. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.